My name is Morgan, and I'm an aquarist at the New England Aquarium's offsite facility, the Quincy Animal Care Center, where we culture artemia, or brine shrimp, as a primary source of food. As you learned in a previous virtual visit to our live food room in the main building, we hatch brine shrimp daily from embryos living inside hard protective coatings called cysts. We aim to feed some of our animals with brine shrimp that are less than 24 hours old. Brine shrimp in this stage are the most nutritious due to high levels of unsaturated fatty acids. These baby brine shrimp, also referred to as instar one stage, are fed to animals such as juvenile fish, seahorses, and garden eels. So the air bubbles the brine um, overnight and we also have a heater in the cone that heats them to an appropriate temperature. Um, when they're not um, at that temperature, they remain as cysts, so they only hatch under ideal conditions, um, which includes temperature, salinity, and they have to have an air source. So I'm taking the air out so all of the shells can settle to the bottom of the cone. Um, so we don't want any of the shells in our harvest. So we let the shells settle to the bottom and we leave the light on because brine are photosensitive. So all of the brine will remain swimming in the water column. Um, that way I won't drain them out of the cone. So if you look really close, all of the shells are settling. And so the shells are garbage. Like we don't need any of the shells. So we're going to wait, they're almost settled all the way. So see how you have like this like line and then all of these guys are still actively swimming. So we're gonna purge just the shell part before we start to harvest them. So we're just gonna purge the cysts really quick. So these are just all of the shells that we don't need. And there's usually, there's going to be some shells left over within this cone, which they actually have a magnetic coating. So we actually use magnets to be able to separate them. So this, the water in the cone that has the brine in it will go through the separator and all of the cysts that are still in there will get stuck on the magnet. And the brine will go into this sieve. And then we're gonna unplug the light so that all the brine will now swim to the bottom of the cone. So they're attracted to light. So if the light is off, they will go the other direction. At the Quincy Animal Care Center, we also take a portion of these newly hatched brine shrimp and grow them up to adulthood. This is done by adding them to a tank filled with extremely salty or hypersaline water. This salty solution is also known as a brine. At a salinity of 70 parts per thousand, that is more than double the average ocean salinity of 30 to 32 parts per thousand. The hypersalinity prevents unwanted things from growing in the warm 85 degree Fahrenheit water, like bacteria. Artemia are excellent osmoregulators, meaning they can effectively maintain the correct salt levels in their bodies. This allows them to withstand and thrive in varying salt conditions, hence the name brine shrimp. Over a two week period, the brine shrimp are fed a mixture of flour and spirulina powder. The flour acts as a binder, allowing the shrimp to eat more food and grow faster. The spirulina, a type of blue-green algae, is acquired from a local farm, which grows the algae in small batches and dehydrates it to maintain a higher protein content than other commercial farms.
During this two week period, the brine shrimp will molt 15 to 20 times and the adult shrimp are harvested on day 14. Following the harvest, the brine shrimp go into a new tank with a slightly lower salinity of 50 parts per thousand, still much higher than ocean water. These shrimp are then fed an enrichment food product full of vitamins. Unlike larger animals such as humans, turtles, or even sharks, most fish cannot take a traditional vitamin. So, these brine shrimp act as a vessel or delivery system for those vitamins to get to our fish. We have also used adult brine shrimp in the past to administer certain medications to smaller animals. In culturing our own live foods like Artemia, we can control the conditions and ultimately the health of our food, ultimately leading to a healthier and more viable collection. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again soon.